it's smart. He can see how people are doing without it, how people are losing things, and he can see how to make a gain and work at it. But if you're trying to get affection from him, you get talk, but you wouldn't necessarily um, getting him to put up the money for things. We'll build the wall, we'll get the Mexicans to pay for it. We'll do things, we'll get other people to pay for it. That's kind of inherent in this. Insecure. Insecure about feeling older than he is. Insecure, even his hair. Even insecure about his appearances. You know? Um, here, here's a guy who's 72. He's in. He's in. The, he's the president of the country, but his attitude is more like a four, trying to act be like a 45-year-old rotato, which just puts him slightly, seemingly out of time. The difficult Saturn. Okay, but the Venus is afflicted too. But it's by the Jupiter. Yes, because it, it spends too much. It wants too much. It, it desires too much. But the Saturn works really hard for it. It wants to control things to get that. But again, if you, it's, doesn't, it's not far a twist to take and say, well, if we want to save what we have and keep our country the way it is, if we put a wall up Saturn to protect our investments and keep out Jupiter squaring the Venus Jupiter and keep out the foreigners, well, in a, well, in a way, its policy is that. It, its policy is in his chart. It's there. It's an instinct in him. Now, Okay, it's an instinct that's not necessarily in the best interest of other people, but maybe in, a, in the best interest of a few family friends. So his ability to side with people closest to him, that's natural. That may not stand out good for him in political grounds because it could show a favoritism. Okay, his son, his confidence, it's up in the 10th house. It's. It's, it's opposed to the moon. He pushes it almost to the expense of health and family. He's going to do what he's going to do. But it's conjunct Uranus in the tenth house. This is, I've got to be different. I'm going to make different. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to do it. It's the most independent, confident. I'm doing my own thing, acting on my own ideas. This is the Gemini thing. You get an idea. As soon as you get an idea, you act on it. You don't reflect on whether it's worth it or not. I got the idea. I'm going on it. And everyone else looks retarded because they're not going on it. So here he is thinking. His thoughts are real. He's making them happy. He's going on. He's super dynamic. And everyone's wondering, well, how come he's not including anybody? Really, it's um, it's his dynamo, but the ability to turn it to his personal gain, to do something independent, to be exceptional, to be the president, to be owner of companies, to do it himself, to have the Trump empire, that's the Uranus sun in Gemini. It's an interesting thing. The only other company, I think, or country that I think has... It's a funny thing. The Vatican has a sun, moon, and something else in Gemini. Several planets in Gemini, all in the 10th house. And it's it's the only country that doesn't have to be. It's a part of Italy, but it doesn't have to pay taxes to Italy. So it's like a province with no taxes. And it has the money to use. It has the freedom to do things at home, make its own investments. That's the Vatican. But that's another story. Um, so this ability to be to be independent is very strong. Now, the funny thing in all of this is that he's born just before an eclipse and still within the orb of it. So there's a shadow of doubt, the past and the future. So when, an, when a lunar eclipse is a lunar eclipse, so the moon would move on the other side of the earth and block the moonlight. So the moon in a place where he can't see his own past or his own roots, he can't see where his, his foundations for during the eclipse. But in his life, he's often eclipsed by assuming he's seeing things and being out of the attached with his foundation. But there's a shadow here. This is like this is um, being born in an eclipse and being in power in such a prominent piece of power is not necessarily um, a positive foreboding. He got, he got there. He didn't even expect to get there, but he got there. more because his attack on the opposition divided the opposition until they were decimated and there he was, he got in. Okay, so this son, the need to have power to be the authority, to see himself as the authority, to be the individual mogul that's way ahead of everyone, that's just smarter, he's more independent than anybody else. That's the sign of Uranus in the 10th house. 
the need for independent power and authority. Other people can vote, fall by the rules, but I have my own rules and my own ways of doing it, and that works. That's my special genius, he would think. And his confidence would come from acting on that. But in power, in politics, where there's so many counterbalances, it, it will create a lot of enemies. You know, it's like, it's a mixed, it's a mixed blessing, the two sides of Gemini. He certainly has the duality and the two sides in his life. But you can see his independence, his, his confidence, almost an arrogance. Ah, I'm here, like, I'm just doing it. Don't. And he's connected all around the world independently, but that's separate than him being prime president. He being the president running a country, but he still has all his connections around the world, even though other people are running there or whatever. So you begin to wonder with his Mercury, how much, who has what influence mentally on him, what's, what's true, what's not true, who he's connected to, who he's not, with his independent stance on power. No checks. Okay. We look at them, we'll go to the Mars. His Mars is in, his, in Leo, pride, power, in the 12th house. His, his force is his own undoing. When he forces and when he proves things, da da, out of pride, when he acts proudly and he's pushing things out of pride and nobility, we'll get this, we'll build the wall, we'll go fight this, we'll do it. Like, his, his, where is his, his, his relationship to, as a government, his relationship to the military would be weak because he's got the Mars in the 12th house. He's not, if it were in the first house, he'd be quick to be using the army to fight. He's thinking it's not good business. He's pulling things out of wars, other things. He's trying to get things to build his wall rather than fight. A good defense is better than an army. Spend the money on business things. But it's Mars. This is both, it's very proud, but, and it's conjunct the Senate, which is also proud. It's that Leo. However, it's, and there's no bad aspects to it. But it does square to midheaven. It does it affect his, his personal attitude and arrogance. It's his own undoing. Pluto and the Mars in the 12th house. He gets pride, he's doing things, he gets proud of what he's doing, he can't. He gets out of touch with things. And even in relationships, his, when he would force things or try to be the controlling one, he, it doesn't hold as much credibility. He's got money, he's the old girl guy, he pays for what he's, who he's got, who's around him, people are with him for that. And he has his personal world around that. It's normal to him, but it's not, it's a behind the scenes 12th house Mars, not an upfront, make the deal, do things behind the scenes. I'm doing things behind the scenes as questionable sources. Don't ask, we'll get it done. That works fine in a lot of businesses. It's not necessarily a comfortable way to run the country. So I, I'm looking at this because we're coming up to the election. We're going to look at it. We're trying to see idea of what he's coming up to, what's not. And I want to look at this. We're going to go over his bio and see how some of this comes up. I'm not a Trump specialist. I just, we all have heard abundance of him. But he has certainly made very confusing dis decisions and about finances that affect the friends and friends, his closest neighbors, ending NAFTA, putting tariffs on Canada and Mexico, doing things like anyone close to him is almost getting, is costing more than, than Korea or Russia. So there's so many puzzles here. That, um, he's the master of a half truth, Mercury Neptune. That's that Mercury Neptune. But this sun and Mars, Mars and, and the ascendant in Leo, is ruled by his sun. He decides to do it, and then he has to keep up to it. But he, even though it's got a good aspects to it, he's still going to have difficulty living up to all the things the sun, the, the Gemini sun gets into. Sun goes for this new thing, because that I can't always get to. So when he had, when he lost his apartments and and some of his deals had to go, he had to go bankrupt and get rid of, let them go to be able to keep going. That would have affected his pride for a number of years. Even the Leo hair, 
and the sensitive to his hair. It's an older guy, you know, but he is naturally going to try and look as good as up as you can for things. But this Mars is a little bit unsettling. Anger, when he gets angry, he acts too fast. He doesn't think clearly. And that's his undoing. And yeah, so the Mars is uncomfortably sitting there. Um, there's a guy in charge of armies, but not in charge of his own energy so well. But you wouldn't think so. He gets other people to do things for him. He gets other people, eleven times, to do things for him, and then they don't do it right or wrong, and he gets rid of them, moves on to someone else. His Jupiter, we talked a little bit about it. The Jupiter is squares of Saturn. There's not really bad aspects between Jupiter and Saturn. Even a square, it moderates the exaggeration of Jupiter. Usually, it's a defensiveness against the exaggeration. It makes it more practical side of understanding. It means you can apply the opportunities to know what's practical when to make money. So with Saturn and Venus, there, the Saturn actually is probably, if Saturn weren't there, he would have spent way more. He would, like, would have had a lot more difficult. But because Saturn is there, it adds a defensiveness to what he has, securing it, anchoring it, walling it off from from other, from other losing it. So the Saturn has added a, a defensive element, somewhat good to his understanding. Again, that's in money. Here's the deal. So the Neptune is trying to go for a deal with Mercury, and the Jupiter is trying to make a pact. So here's a, we'll put a wall around this. We can do that. No one needs to know this, but we'll set it up like this. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm taking jumps with this, but it's mostly because we just we just did this chart and going back and reviewing coming up, and it's not someone that's personally in the class. Okay. Um, again, we talked on the Saturn. I'm not going to go back over to Saturn. There's no other aspects disrupting Saturn. Saturn's not being disturbed by Uranus, Neptune, or Pluto. Saturn's there controlling Venus, controlling the finances. And who's friends and who has access to it? Mostly family, controlling that. But he has his own kind of fanatical ideas about it that Saturn's always trying to fix. But the Mercury and the ideas is Mercury's higher than the defensive, so it's always a catch-up. We look at Uranus, we talked on Uranus up in the 10th house, he's got to work it. Somebody needs to work for himself, do his own thing. He does brilliantly on his own. Don't tell him what to do, he does his own thing. It's great energy. He built his hotels, he's done his own thing. Now he's run a country his own way. So he's doing it. It's another notch in his, in his, another badge on his cap. But doing a country your own way can, can upset a lot of people. It can cause a lot of disruption. And um, it's already created a great divisions within the country. So you can see the need to be independent with Uranus there. But it's also, it's enforcing the sun, but it's opposing his moon. So the more it reinforces the sun and it builds up its sense of importance, the more, equally more, it will disrupt his feelings and his security. So every move he's making outwardly, there's a cost or disruption to what he set up personally. 